In 1986, a faceless serial killer began stalking children on the Cape Flats. He became known as the Station Strangler. By 1994, 22 young boys had been found dead, sodomized, and then strangled. The following year, in 1995, Norman Simons, a school teacher, was convicted of the murder of 10-year-old Elroy van Ruyen, the last victim in the string of child murders. In the public imagination, he was the station strangler. 27 years later, Simon remains behind bars, soon to be paroled. Despite being eligible for parole, Simons was never charged with any of the other killings. Nobody else was ever arrested. In 2010, police opened the cold case and reinvestigated DNA samples taken from the crime scenes. None of the DNA found matched Simons. Doubts have also emerged about whether he should have been convicted of Elroy van Ruyen's murder. So, if Simons isn't the station strangler, who is? I think they got the wrong guy and shouldn't have gotten a conviction. That's a that's a sort of a difficult and a two-part question. If you look at the fact that after Simons was arrested, there were still some murders of young children, young boys, in a very similar fashion. Then definitely he wasn't the only one. So that's the first issue. And when we re-looked at the cases, you know, sort of 29, 2009, 2010, we found other cases that, you know, were very, very similar in, in, in circumstance, victimology, location, etc., to his cases. There was an interesting documentary done a couple of years ago where they interviewed the prosecutor, uh, and he says that he was very surprised they got a conviction. You know, it really hinged around an identity parade. So it's, it's one thing to say he was only convicted on one. He wasn't even charged with the other ones, which means the prosecution felt there wasn't a prima facie, in other words, an on the face of it case against him for the, any of the other cases. It Norman Afzal Simons was born on the 12th of January 1967, known as the Station Strangler. He is a South African suspected serial killer who was convicted in 1995 of the murder of a 10 year old Elroy van Ruyen. He was sentenced to 35 years, 25 for murder and 10 for kidnapping. Now, Simons was an intelligent individual who enjoyed playing classical music and was capable of speaking seven languages, including English, Afrikaans, Corsa, and French. He was employed as a grade five teacher at Alpine Primary School in Beacon Valley, Mitchell's Plain. Simon's victims are all young boys aged between the ages of nine and 13. Simon's is believed to have been, uh, to have started his sporadic series of murders on 29 October, 1996, ending only with his arrest nine years later in April, 1994. He collected his moniker after it became apparent that most of his victims were lured away from train stations. Soviet serial killer Andrei Chikatilo had a similar modus operandi. Simons recognized his victims before strangling them. Victims were found face down with their heads tied behind their backs, buried in shallow sandy graves. In some cases, the victims were found with their underwear around their necks, presumably used as garret. Handwritten notes were also found next to some victims. Simon's relationship with his older stepbrother seems to have had a major bearing on his criminal activities. Simon's alleges that his older stepbrother sodomized him as a child. He also reports hearing voices from his brother instructing him to kill. Simon's brother was an alcoholic and was murdered in 1991. <laughs> Can you remember what happened that day as well because it was a party on top because it found the so-called strangler it's 2023 days before the station strangler norman of zal simons is to be released on parole mitchell plains residents are demanding that the 21 unsolved murders he was accused of be reopened and further investigated simons was handed a life sentence in 1995 for the murder and kidnapping of 10 year old elroy van ruyen in mitchell's plain cape town his arrest came after years of terror gripped the cape flats from 1986 to 1994 over the discovery of the bodies of 21 people who had been strangled and sodomized and the majority of them was children Despite similarities to Van Ruyen's murder, the state could not provide evidence to link Simons to the 21 killings. On Sunday, the Department of Correctional Services and the police met Mitchell's Plains residents ahead of Simons' release on the 20th of July, 2023. Because there's people that we need to hear from the people. 
It's part of the healing process. So let us go there so we will deal with that. But this is for now the purpose why we are here today to give you feedback, but also to hear from you. What are the feelings and how do we, how do we work together and walk together? Simons will not leave in Mitchell Plain. Instead, he will be under house arrest in Para Belleville. Now, Michael Jacobs, the deputy chairperson of Mitchell Plains Residents Association, said a budget must be set up and the police at national and provincial level should make available sufficient detective capacity and resources to ensure that the families of the 21 get the justice they deserve. With residents signaling their agreement, Jacobs argued that the science of forensics was now more advanced than in the 1990s and it was therefore unacceptable that there were victims five, according to him, who are still unidentified to this day. Dean Ram Jumia, the founder of the non-profit Nehemiah Core in Initiative, said a report should be compiled with details about each investigation. Residents said that if the murders were not committed by Simons, then that means the perpetrator might still be among what them. What guarantees do you give us that this man is so straight up, like you people profess? I hear a lot of big words here this afternoon. I understand all of these systems, but it's a lot of words. To me, it's a lot of words that has been spoken. You don't actually know the reality of what the people has actually experienced. And when this thing came out into the news, you have no idea what it caused in the community. My children were little then. I am older. If I have the chance, I will slaughter that man because he took away the rights of our children. He needs to be thought of. He didn't think of our children. Yikes. Well, there you have it, Zar people. Let me know your thoughts about this on the comment section. Do you think that he deserves a second chance? And do you think that he has served his time? I will bring you the updates hot, just the way you like it.